This Flybear SR72 Dark Star is a great little airframe and a lot of fun as it is stock. But as this is set up with the brushless motor and gyro mods that I made to it, it is one of the funnest little micro sub 250 gram jets I've flown so far. It's just an absolute blast. So before we go into the details, I've got a little teaser, a little 10 second teaser here that I'll show you and then we'll begin. Is that awesome or is that awesome? Okay, so let's start off with all the electronics that I'm using for this project, all right? I did use all of the items that you see listed here except for the prop. The prop is a Gem Fan Hurricane, I think. It's a 3016 three-blade polycarbonate prop, but it just didn't provide the amount of power that I was looking for for this jet, so I ended up replacing this prop with a um, 3.8 by 3 two blade ABS prop that supplies a ton of power and it's pretty efficient at the same time. So I will try and have links to everything in the show notes, either the identical items, the, the Fly Fun ESC here, the, the Hobby Wing Fly Fun 12 amp ESC, it's rated for 2S to 4S, has a 5 volt 2 amp back. I really like the Hobby Wing. ESCs. I've, I've used them extensively. These are getting hard to find. I don't know why, but the fly funds are getting hard to find. The standard uh, Hobby Wing 12 amp ESCs are great ESCs. I have a couple of those as well. So if I can't find the fly fun, I will have links to something else that's comparable to this in the show notes. Uh, I will see if I can find that prop. A it's a team out prop. If I can't find that prop, I'll find something similar that should provide similar power. I use the Beta FPV 2004 3000 kV motor. It's a team out motor. Um, it's rated for 2S to 4S. They don't sell these anymore, but I do have a link to the same size, same kV motor, which should give you similar power. I use the Radio Link Bime DB Gyro. It's an Elevon uh, Gyro, uh, which is what's needed for this project. And it's also very low profile. So I use the Bime DB rather than the standard Bime D uh, Gyro. So it would mount flat and, 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 and not be very tall. The receiver I used is the WFLY RF201S. SBUS PPM receiver has diversity antennas. I really like those receivers. The battery that I use is a GNB 3S 530 milliamp hour 90C LiPo. This is the fourth airframe I have used this, this LiPo in. So the way I fly this plane with mixed mode flying, I will be able to get between six to seven minutes of flight time depending on how hard I push it, leaving 3.6 volts per cell, which I think is outstanding considering how much power uh, this little jet has. Okay, so let's go on to the next screen. So I used a map pin. It's like a push pin. I pushed the pins through the top of the nacelles to make sure that before I did any cutting, I was forward of the housing for the little EDF fan and I was, you know, clear of the back of the motor before I started cutting the foam. So I found those locations and just marked them and then just drew a straight line all the way across both of the nacelles. And then I just used a square lined up with those to um, continue that line down the sides of the nacelle so that I could cut out a nice rectangular area out of each one just in order to get to these motors and remove these motors and they were kind of a pain I didn't use anything to release the glue so what you might want to do is either use some alcohol or um, like fingernail polish remover that won't hurt EPP foam something that will kind of dissolve that glue a little bit because I had a heck of a time getting both of those out without you know damaging any of the foam I finally got it done, but it was some work. So just a heads up on that. 
All right, so here's an image of one of the motors removed. They've got the um, servo cable uh, running beneath where that housing was. And then um, the next image, you can see both of the motors are removed. And then I just took the, the two uh, foam sections that I cut out and just glued those back into the nacelles because what I'm using is a single pusher motor. I don't have any any need to have those uh, access to the inside of those nacelles. Okay. All right. So and on the top, I, here's you can see the black and white wires from one of the motors before I got the motor removed. But I, I removed the um, the gyro receiver brick, uh, and then I also removed the two uh, foam separators that they had. You know where the battery was in the front part of the compartment. The, uh, the gyro receiver board was in the back part of the compartment. I just wanted to be able to use this entire bay for my battery, okay? So Because my battery takes up about three quarters of the length of this compartment. So this compartment is just being used now as a battery compartment and nothing else. All right, here you can see where, where um, I got my ESC positioned. I ran, I cut two little holes on either side of the back side of the back portion of this compartment um, so that I could bring the power cable from the ESC up through one hole and then route the um, servo wires for the elevons through the other one and then I used uh, a thin uh, velcro strap to um, secure the ESC to the bottom of the fuselage. All right here you can see the motor mount it's a it's a two Two section motor mount. There's the back plate that you attach to the fuselage, and then the forward, the front plate, the motor attaches to, and then you've got two screws that attach the front plate to the back plate. I like that kind of setup. It's it's simple, it's straightforward, it's easy to use. I wanted to mount the motor in the horizontal center of the of the wing plate and the fuselage. You know, not counting the nacelles because when I go full throttle, I want this um, jet to maintain a level attitude even at full throttle so I wanted to make sure my thrust line was going right through the horizontal center of the wing plate and the nose of the aircraft and that turned out really really well so here you can see the uh, beta FPV 2004 3000 kV motor and uh, you can see this prop has been used quite a bit on this plane already it's got some chips in it so I'll need to replace that prop pretty soon. But that 3.8 by 3 prop provides a tremendous amount of power. All right, so here is the bottom of the fuselage. Once I got the two sections of the nacelles I cut out glued back in, and then I just used some thin scrap plastic to kind of cover that center compartment where all of the equipment is housed so that it just looked better from the air. You know what I mean? I pulled my ESC as far forward as I could, uh, so that I wouldn't have to use a tremendous amount of nose ballast weight to counteract the weight of the motor on on the back of the fuselage. So, so uh, getting everything positioned the way I have it positioned as far as my electronics, I was able to get away with adding seven grams of nose ballast weight under this rubber nose cone. You know, at the very front of the uh, foam part of the fuselage, I've got seven grams of nose ballast weight on there. I tried more weight, I tried less weight. More weight makes it too nose heavy for me. Less weight makes it less stable. That's why I settled on seven grams of nose weight for this uh, airframe and where I have the CG. So that worked out very, very well. If you guys watch the flight videos of this, of this uh, uh, aircraft after the brushless mod, you'll see just how well this thing performs and how well it holds its line when you're going full throttle. So I've got the ESC pushed as far forward as I could. I've got it secured with the Velcro, stra Velcro strap. I've got my wires for the servos routed through that other hole that I made in the inside of the battery compartment and routed those back. The um, BIME DB gyro is located right toward the front of this compartment. My uh, receiver is just behind that, and then I routed the wires out in front with about a 90 degree offset and taped those down to the fuselage, and then the you know, and then the ESC wires running back to the to the motor. That was it. I mean, it was a, it was a real simple conversion. It took a little bit of work 
to get everything um, set up and configured and positioned the way I needed it to to get everything balanced. But now that you know how that needs to be done, it's going to be a lot easier for you than it was for me. Okay, so here's some specs. The airframe, less the battery. The airframe weighs 121 grams. My LiPo, which is a GNB 3S 530 milliamp hour 90c lipo weighs 38 grams my all up weight including the seven grams of nose ballast weight that i have on it is 159 grams now i have tested this motor and this prop on a 3s lipo on the bench and my numbers on the bench were at 100 percent throttle it gave me 346 grams of thrust pulling 9.2 amps at 50 percent throttle it gives me 237 grams of thrust and pulls 5.7 amps now with this power system you can cruise once you get it launched you can cruise around with this at about 40 percent throttle so i would say your cruising power it's going to be pulling at at 40 uh, percent throttle is probably going to be pulling somewhere around four four amps i didn't i didn't test the amp draw at 40 percent throttle but my my estimate would be that probably about four amps at 40 percent throttle my launch throttle is at 50 percent with a little sidearm toss from the wing tip, it takes right off. And I launch it in um, gyro mode, which is just wind mitigation mode. I don't even launch it in fully stabilized mode. This, this airframe is so stable, you don't even have to launch it in fully stabilized mode. Okay, so with the weight of the aircraft, the amount of thrust I'm getting at full throttle, I have a thrust to weight ratio of 2.1 to 1. So it, not only does it have unlimited vertical, but it will accelerate vertically, which is just absolutely awesome. All right, so we're back to the beginning. Um, that is um, all the information that I have for you guys on, on how I completed this conversion. It was a really straightforward, really simple conversion. I think the hardest part for me um, of this entire conversion was just getting those those um, brushed EDF units out of those nacelles. That was probably the hard, that was probably the hardest part of the whole deal. So you have to work them and work them and work them until they release. But um, I didn't use any any alcohol or anything to try and loosen up the glue ahead of time. If I had to do it over again, I would do that. Just just to give you a heads up. All right. So um, if you haven't looked at the playlist, there's a link to the playlist in the show notes that has all of the flights I've performed on this aircraft so far my setup is golden there's also a setup uh, link to my setup file in the show notes that has my cg my uh, the ballast weight that i mentioned my launch throttle the amount of deflection i have on my elevator and aileron um, the amount of dual rate and expo i have dialed into the transmitter so if you guys are interested in this in my setup after seeing how it flies that that is in there as well as links to the components that I that I searched for and found that I think would be comparable to what I used in this project since I can't find like the exact same motor I may not have been able to find the exact um, ESC or the exact prop but um, anyway um, that's a wrap on this episode thanks for watching and I will see you next time in the Tinker's Lab <laughs>